now, once I finished it, I realized, oh, that was a hint. That was a hint. That was a hint. I was fed and I enjoyed the plate. I ate it up, sopped it up like a biscuit. I hope y'all can't hear that fan because um, what it's giving is hot, like toasty, warm, flames, burning, fire, brimstone. Um, anyway, um, welcome back to my channel. My name is Desmond Z. If this is the first time you've ever seen me. All right, so today we'll be talking about, well, I will be talking about, you will be listening. Um, hopefully this will spark you to talk. Like, spark some conversation within you. Um, what am I saying? What's going on? Yes, today I'm going to be talking about five books that I read that I rated five stars. So this is all Hot 100 number one hits, no misses, billboard, top of the charts, 10 weeks running, cannot be denied. Let's just start. Let's just... Let's just get it going because I don't know what I'm doing right now. All right. Oh, but before we start, I should mention that I've read all of these within the last week. So these are fresh five stars. I don't see those five stars changing anytime soon because I sometimes I'll rate something like, oh, this is four stars or this is three stars. And then later I'll like bring it up or bring it down Be once I've had like a longer time to sit with it. No, the, these won't be changing. These will not be changing. I've read all of these within the last week or so. Um, but I don't see them changing anytime soon. All right, so let's just start. Starting off with uh, Transcendent Kingdom by Yagi Asi. I have had this book on my list for quite some time now. So I made a TikTok uh, talking about some of my favorite books. Uh, there's like this little trend that was going around book talk. And someone in the comments were, said that Transcendent Kingdom was one of their favorites. And I told her, I was like, oh, that's been on my list for a while. I've been meaning to read it or whatever. It was just like, it was like serendipity. It was like it was meant to be. That my copy from the library came in. And so I read it and fell in love with it. So I went to the bookstore and got my own physical copy because that's how much I loved it. And this was like a book of the month thing that I'm assuming, it was from Half Price Books. So, you know, they buy books and I'm assuming someone took their copy there uh, because they didn't want it. So uh, whoever that person was, then what, what was your problem? Why didn't you love this book? Because it was everything. But anyway, let's just get into the review. Transcendent Kingdom is about a, an African family that migrates from Ghana to the U.S., specifically Alabama, uh, before the main character, who was Gifty, before she was born. Her older brother, her mom, and her dad all came here. And then a few years later, she came along. So the story is basically about their family and like the destruction of it and how it just, you know, it crumbles, it falls apart. And she like loses her faith in God and she turns like to science to help her solve the issues that she's dealing with caused by the destruction of her family. Her mom, when they first get here, her mom is working as like a nurse aide for this older racist white man who like has dementia and obviously he's forgotten everything except how to be racist and except how to call her out of her name, um, everything under the sun but what her actual name is. The dad can't really find work because no one really wants to hire him and he's also not used to living in a place where it's the neighbors and everyone around they aren't really a community he's used to coming out speaking to his neighbor and you know being one with everyone around him now i hear a lot of people say that about america i for one i come out i don't speak to my neighbors they don't speak to me and i don't mind it at all i leave i get in my car and i get out of my car when i come back and i come in uh i come in my apartment that's it like what 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 more is there for me to do? So obviously the family is struggling to make ends meet, you know, two parents, two children, trying to keep food on the table, clothes on your back or whatever. As the years go on, the dad really, he is not, you know, he's not accustomed to living in America. He doesn't like it. So he abandons the family. The brother plays sports and he gets hurt and he gets addicted to pain meds. And eventually, you know, that leads to another tragedy and it, now it's just mom and Gifty and they are trying to just hold on. And so, you know, we go back from every all of these things that happened in Gifty's childhood to who she is now being, um, working in like medicine and science. She's trying basically to figure out how to prevent these things from happening again. It's like she's made it her life mission to 
help someone stop being addicted to pain meds to help people who are dealing with depression and just figure out how the brain works with these things because obviously her mom is depressed and sad and broken she's lost her oldest child and then obviously the oldest brother is gone so she's trying to figure out how to fix these two things so they never happen again and she's just dealing with that while you know she's lost her faith in god it's just really it's a slow burn it's like it's not the type of five story read where it's just this is happening that is happening that's this this and that and it's like just thing after thing where like you just you're just holding on to it it's more of a slow burn type of thing where all of these bad things has happened to this person and they are just living life trying to figure out what do i do next and where do i turn and how do i get answers yeah i just i loved it loved it loved it loved it five stars like a hit cannot be denied loved everything about this i have one more thing to say yes i another reason why i really 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 love this book is because while talking about christianity and believing in god and like being a person of faith it is so easy so easy i feel like to be turned away and whether people who believe in god um want to admit it or not it's so easy to be turned away because of the people not because of the high, the higher power not because of god but because of the people um i never let them crush my faith and never let them push me away um because i'm always be true blue tight like glue but all these people that are around this family treat them like shit but you're supposed to be good christian people there's a part in the book where it talks about where the brother has began to like fall from grace and he's no longer you know this star athlete and the minute the minute that he is no longer giving the results that they want you know on the field or on the court or whatever they turn on him he's every name in the book he, they're booing him and it talks about like youth pastors who only see heaven for certain people and you know not for everyone and they they have young protégés who go out in the streets and raise hell and make fun of people and cause trouble but then we'll come down to the church and act like you know they're holier than thou so i think the author did such a such a such a good job you know displaying things like that and talking about those type of topic talking about that topic um thoroughly enjoyed it all right moving on next book um anxious people by frederick bachman i talked about this book in a previous haul that i did and i feel like i say that every time um lately but because those the books in that haul i didn't expect to read them so soon i just i, I was in the mood for them and i'm a mood reader okay so this story takes place in a small little town right outside of stockholm and when the people in the book, or specifically one or two characters, when they refer to Stockholm, it's always like a pun. So obviously they don't really care for the people in Stockholm and they don't care for the city itself. But this book is very heartfelt type of book, but it's delivered with like witty commentary and like little jokes. And I absolutely adored it. I thought this book was going to be something completely different than uh, what it is. It's also adapted into a Netflix series, but I I am going to be one of those people and I'm going to let you know here and now this book 10 times better than a series. I, I read the book first and then I watched the series. No comparison. No comparison. Five stars. Top of the charts. The story starts off with what's supposed to be a bank robbery. This person um, goes to rob a bank for what reason? We found out late. We find out later. And when they run, so they obviously so they don't get caught by the police. They run into this open house that's going on. These people are viewing. A bunch of random people are viewing this apartment. Um, obviously to buy it, rent it, or whatever. And the bank robber runs into the apartment to escape uh, being caught and holds everyone hostage. And so from there, we get to meet all these various people who are here. We have a lesbian couple by the name of Ro and Julia. Was it Ro and Julia? Yeah, Ro and Julia. And we have a little old lady named Estelle. 
um, then there's um, Zara. I'm looking at it, but I'm, uh, this rich uh, like banker lady um, named Zara. And then there's an older, another older couple. Old, blah, 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 another older, older couple um, whose names are Roger and Anna Lena. Is it Anna Lena? Yeah, I think it was Anna Lena. You're in this setting and we find out who these people are and how they all maybe have interacted in, you know, in the past or whatever. So, I thought this was going to be more like a thriller or like serious type of book where, you know, it's like, it's, it's drama, drama, drama and like, and like, oh no, 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 what's going on? No, this book was hilarious. And it, it does have like a heartfelt message, like I said, but it's just, it's so much more than that. There are the two police officers in this small town who are, you know, really like taking over this whole like investigation. Uh, Jack is the dad and Jim is the son, Jim and Jack. Uh, Jack is more, more serious and wants to be, you know, do things by the book and, you know, get everything right. Whereas Jim is like, he's older, he's more lax and he always tells his, he tells his son, you're a better police officer and you know, because you take everything so serious. But none of these people seem to be taking the investigation serious. They are just giving Jack the runaround and he is arguing with these people and just like hilarity ensues. Like he just can't seem to get through to these people how serious this matter was. You all were hell hostage and why aren't you giving me the answers that I need? So yeah, I don't really know how much more, how like what else I can say to describe this book without ruining it. So just trust me when I say, trust me when I say five stars read the book please don't watch the series first like i'm not saying don't watch the series but don't watch it first read the book i i truly think you would really really love this hilarity okay and the next book i actually don't have a physical copy yet i ordered it and it just hasn't come yet but i listened to the audio book for what was the name of the book i it's not Diary of. Bad Fat Black Girl um, Notes from a Trap Feminist. This book isn't really like a memoir or like autobiography or anything like that. It's just more of Cecily's commentary. Like tell, like there are stories from her life, but it's more so like stories from her life and just also just her take on like feminism and just being a person in, in society, uh, specifically a woman, obviously. And she, in this book, she talks about growing up, uh, you know, in Chicago, um, being a queer woman and discovering, you know, her queerness and what it's like being a plus size woman, a black plus size woman, and how feminism hasn't always, you know, looked out for people like her. When it comes to feminism, you have to look a certain way and talk a certain way to be taken serious and respected and, you know, protected under this umbrella of feminism. But when it's women like her who don't talk like this person or who don't, they don't, you know, she doesn't look like this person, then people just tend to forget about the others. She touched on like friendship, friendship between women. She touched on like obviously talking about masculinity and toxic mas masculinity. She talked about homophobia within the black community. She, um, what else, what else, what else, what else? She talked about like relationships and romantic relationships and what those look like to her. And they may not be the standards that society has set and that's just fine with her. And she talks about like being so self-interested that she will always put herself first and things like that, which everyone should do. Um, yeah. So, um, yeah, I get, I, it's could, I guess you could say it's a memoir. I, it didn't really feel like a memoir, I guess. I guess because whenever I think of memoirs, I think of like, most of them were just kind of stuffy and like, it's just like a bunch of information is thrown at you, I guess, because this one was more entertaining but i still obviously learned a lot of things and saw her point of view i guess you could call it a memoir i'm i don't know i'm gonna have to look it up and see what she labels it there is really just not much else to say about it like i would highly recommend you uh buy this book listen to the audiobook listen to the audiobook because like 10 out of 10 would recommend our next book is Hidden Pictures by Jason Rakulik. And this book uh, was a little bit out of my regular 
like reading habits uh i've been doing a good job of doing that uh pretty soon i won't be able to say it's outside of my reading habits because now it's becoming a habit this is like a thriller horror type of book i guess you could say and basically this book is about first of all let's talk about this cover and how much i actually really like just like this i love like covers that have like the soft touch material and it's yeah it this this does it for me like i really really like the cover like that's a 10 out of 10. okay so basically hidden pictures is about this girl named mallory she's 21 and she's fresh out of rehab and she's on probation she has a sponsor you know she was addicted to pain meds among other things and she's had some tragedies in her life that led her to you know where she is now and she's just trying to get her life back on track i feel like i have a hair on my lip <clears throat> She's trying to get her life back on track, so she goes to interview with this with the Maxwell family. They live in this, you know, really nice, uh, affluent suburb of New Jersey. Uh, it's Caroline and Ted Maxwell, and they have a little boy named Teddy, who's five. And basically, she'd be the the live-in like babysitter and nanny for over over the summer. So she goes to interview, and the mom loves her, wants to hire her. But the dad comes in, you know, asks her all these questions. He's being hard on her about, like, her past drug drug abuse and stuff like that. So eventually she gets a job anyway, and she lives in, like, their little cottage behind the house. She doesn't live in the main house. And so right off the bat, she notices, like, these weird things going on. Teddy likes to draw, and he draws creepy, like, really suspect things, like no five-year-old should be doing this but the mom is like oh you know we hoping we're hoping it's just a phase you know um he has an imaginary friend named anya that he draws and that he says you know she tells me this is what we should draw yada 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 and let me look at my notes so that i can so that i can get this right um yeah once the pictures start getting more gruesome and mallory feels like a presence in the cottage she turns to the crazy neighbor mitzi uh, who had already introduced herself and then Maxwell's like, oh, we don't like that lady. She's nosy and she's also kind of crazy and we think she's a drug abuser as well. So you need to stay away from her because, girl, you was already on this shit and you, we need you to stay off of it, especially if you're going to be watching our child. So there's that whole thing. And what else, what else, what else, what else, what else, what else, what else? Um, but yeah, once the pictures start getting like a little crazy... Mallory is like, you know, something's going on here. Something's not right. This is not just a kid drawing weird things or him having an imaginary friend. Something's, something is not right. So she learns that something tragic happens, happened in her cottage like over like 50, 60 years ago. And the, the nosy neighbor Mitzi tells her this. And so she's like, maybe the spirit of this woman is trying to talk through Teddy or whatever and Mallory is like really religious and ever since everything that happened in her life you know she did a complete turnaround and now she's like she goes to church all the time and like I said she has a sponsor and all that and she's on the straight and narrow yada 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 so she is a full believer in like spirits and like a higher power in other realms and well I guess people who I don't know I won't go into all that, but she believes in these things. Uh, but I guess every believer wouldn't believe in that type of thing. I don't know. I'm not here to be, you know, Tammy Faye Baker. But, um, what was I saying? Now, I have to say, I have to tell you, with this book, the first half, the first half I won't, like, I, another five star, five stars, that's what this video was about. But, listen to me now. The first half of this book, I would not give it five stars. It's the last half of this book saved it. Now, I've had books that I've read where, you know, I said, oh, these, this bored me. It was only until the end. I got. It wasn't until I got to the end where, like, I was really interested and I would never give them five stars. But, listen to me when I tell you. Just listen. I'll give you the first couple of chapters or whatever, you know, you we have to lay the groundwork. We have to introduce characters, you know, set the setting, set the scene, you know, get us all settled in for the ride, right? I'll give you that. But it nothing was really happening. We would drop little things. Now, once I finished it, I realized, oh, that was a hint. That was a hint. That was a hint. Now I realize that, but 
it shouldn't take me finishing it to realize, oh, that was something, that was something. I need something to entertain me and hold me on, hold like for me to hold on to until I get there. And there were some things like that that I didn't have to read all the way through to get, but it just, it wasn't enough for me. It was like, we would pick up, I'd be like, oh, maybe that's something. And then we would drop back down. Like it just, it wasn't doing it for me. But the last half of this book, there were twists and there were turns and like I was on the edge of my seat and I thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed it. I was emotional at the end. I didn't expect that. I was just sitting there like, damn. And there was a twist that I did not expect, didn't see coming. And I just, I don't, I, it, it did what needed to be done. The things were done and they were done correctly. So the last half of this book really just sealed the deal. And there's like, there's little drawings in here that show like what Teddy is drawing and how creepy they are. And it just, it, it satisfied. It, it, I was hungry and I was fed and I enjoyed the plate. I ate it up, sopped it up like a biscuit. Thoroughly, thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed it. Yeah, so, yeah, when I'm reading a book and if it's like I only like half the book, that's not five stars for me. It it really has to turn things around to redeem itself. And it did. It did. I didn't have that much faith in this book going in in the first place because it's just not my typical, typical read, um, like I said. But, I, I, yeah, 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 yeah. There is a part in this book, there is a part in this book, there's a twist that is discussed and it's a very, very hot topic in society, which it shouldn't have to be, but it is. And I, I can't say what it is because it would ruin the book, but I was like, oh, that could be used as kind of like, that could be seen in a negative light. It could be like maybe propaganda for a certain group of people but i don't think that was the intention i truly don't feel like that was the intention uh i have to talk to some people that actually read this book if y'all read re, if y'all read this book like let me know let me know down in the comments can we need to i need to talk to some people about this to get their thoughts on it i'll have to look at some of the reviews and see if anybody else said the same thing that i said uh because i haven't looked at any reviews for this book but yeah well, definitely five stars. It's a five star for me. Like, be warned if you if you read this based on my recommendation, I'm letting you know the first half. You know, it's a little, mm, but I definitely think like the last, like I would say the first 30, 40 percent is kind of it's not just dead dry, but it's a slow burn. The lead character Mallory, there were times where she lied about things. Like it was like a typical movie or situation like you would be reading a book or watching a movie i'll say a movie much more relatable uh much more comparable to a movie where you're watching and the main character is lying about something and it's a lie that could be easily found out like girl we could go to google and find out this is not true we could easily go ask the neighbor and they could tell us girl. they would know you was lying and they don't even know you when people lie about things like that, it's like, it just, okay, you, you stupid, stupid idiot. Like you, you, you imbecile. Like, why are we lying about things like this? So I did not like the main character completely, but she wasn't just like fully annoying, but she, she did get on my nerves at times. Cause I was like, why are we lying about stupid shit, girl? Like this could be easily discovered. Just tell the truth. And you have multiple times to tell the truth. Like you just dragging it now. You really dragging it. Like, please, because I'm about to drag you if you don't quit dragging it, okay? Uh, so, yeah, there's another warning. But, 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 I would still recommend this and five stars for me. Like, shout out to Jason. I'll have to look at some of his other books and see if they, see if they are up to par. Uh, last book. I feel like this video took me so long to make and I'm literally only talking about five books. And, like, this... Yeah, this this shouldn't have taken me this long to get through this, guy. Fine. Oh, but anyway, all right. Our last read, um, Boyfriend Material by Alexis Hall. And Alexis is a man. I know when we think Alexis, most of us, especially Americans, think 
women. Alexis Hall is a man. Alexis Hall is an English author um, and this is a romance novel about two guys and if that's not your thing, first of all, why are you homophobic? Why? Why are you a horrible person? Why don't you want to read a book about two men being in love? Huh? Huh? You need to check on that. You need to see what's wrong in here. Why you don't want to read? Huh? But <laughs> Something's wrong with me. Something's wrong with me. Anyway, um, but boyfriend material, I, this was actually talked about, um, from Jess Reads. That, uh, is another YouTube, uh, YouTuber, booktuber that I watch. She talked about this book. She said it was five stars. I was like, okay, I'll see, I'll see, I'll see, I'll see. I trust you, girl. She wasn't lying. She, she wasn't lying. Shout out to Jess because this was five stars. It's not even about the romance for me. This is simply one of the funniest books I have ever read. The humor, the wit, the jokes, the British humor is the star of this book. Like, forget the main characters. Like, they're good as well. Like, the dialogue, the, the, the back and forth, the tit for tat, the, the banter is, is there. It's just like the author's writing, like if all of his other books are like this, sign me up, sign me up. Yeah, like I didn't even care if these people ended up together. I didn't care like what happened between them. Like I did, I did, I won't say like I didn't, I did. Um, like I was rooting for them or whatever, but it was just, I was just entertained. Like I was entertained by the author's writing and I did not expect this book to be as funny as it was five out of five stars so this book is about luke and oliver luke is the son of two rock stars um they were big in like the 70s 80s he's uh the book describes a mom as like the um a french adele type she was in the 80s and the dad is you know typical rock star and they were together back then but they broke up and he pretty much abandoned them when Luke was two or three. So, excuse me, Luke grew up with just him and his mom and like his mom's best friend. And yeah, he never knew his dad. So Luke is a mess. He works for like this charity and he goes to this party one night and party one night. Why did I sound like Kim Parker when I said that? Uh, he goes to this party one night and you know, he gets drunk and the tabloids see him because he is the son of two rock stars. So like the tabloids and paparazzi, like, you know, they follow and report on him um, a lot of the times, but it's always in a negative light. It's never in a positive way. Every time they see him or catch him doing something, it's always, you know, just partying, getting drunk, you know, different guy, different guy here, different guy there. And that's, you know, the public image that he has. So once he does something and it's a risk to his job. They are losing donors for this uh, nonprofit that he works for. His boss tells him, hey, either straighten up and fly right. Straighten up and fly right. Um, yeah, that's right. Straighten up and fly right. That's the saying. Anyway, um, either you get it together or, you know, we give you the boot. So he needs a fake boyfriend. He needs somebody to pretend they're dating who, you know, has it together, is more put together to help him with his image. So in comes Oliver. They have a mutual friend um, that introduces them. Well, not introduces them because they've already met once, but it didn't really go, you know, too well. So Luke's best friend, Bridget, like, you know, we, let's put y'all together and see what we can get from this. They start doing the whole fake dating thing. And it's like Oliver is, um, he's a criminal lawyer and he's more put together. He's more by the book, straight lace. Whereas Luke is all over the place and we've seen these pairings before in like books and movies and stuff like that. Uh, so it's nothing new, but like I said, it's the writing, it's the wit, it's the humor, it's the banter. It just, it really just set it off. It really just sets it off and it just does this whole trope so well, so, so well. The friend group, uh, let me see, let me see, let me look at, let me look at my nose right quick. Yeah, let me look at my notes. 
Can I look at my nose? Okay, Luke is 28. He's 6'4". Dad is a washed up rock star. Yeah, I already said all that. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The side characters. The supporting characters in this book did not, did not disappoint either. It's not just Luke and Oliver delivering funny one-liners and all that. Luke has a co-worker named Alex who's like the office doofus. Their whole thing is Luke coming in every morning and they start off with like a knock-knock joke or some type of very kiddie-ish immature joke Luke tells Alex that could be easy to get the punchline. Alex misses it every time because he's the office doofus. Alex is high society, he grew up privileged and he says really out of touch with the real world things and he means no harm by it. It's funny because typically these type of characters we wouldn't like uh, because they are so out of touch with reality but somehow Alex it's endearing because it's just he just, the baby don't know no better. That baby just needs a little help. That baby just is, is just, it's not well. He is not well and it's hilarious. It is actually hilarious. There is Tom who Luke once went on a few dates with, but he, and he's the Idris Elba type uh, is how he's described in the book, but it didn't work out. So Tom actually ended up with Luke's best friend Bridget. There's James Royce and then there's James Royce Royce. They are a couple, same name. Uh, we have Priya, uh, the resident short lesbian, um, is another friend of Luke's. Okay. If romance novels aren't your thing, I would still recommend this because it's just, it's funny. It's funny. Take my word for it. And if you don't like it, you can come back and you can cuss me out and you can say, Desmond, you up fucking liar hated that book why would you ever, ever recommend that um and yeah so yeah that's all i really have that's all i really have i feel like i talked so much and this was only five books and i was like oh this is gonna be a short video i'm gonna be able to get through this i'm only talking about a few books and i'm not you know gonna be here for long but look at me look at me now look at me take a look at me now Take a look at me right now. But yeah, these are four of the five books. Hidden Pictures, Anxious People, Yagi Yasi, and Yagi, no, that's not, that's the author. Uh, Hidden Pictures, Anxious People, Transcendent Kingdom, Boyfriend Material, and then Bad Fat Black Girl, Notes from a Trap Feminist. Why am I shaking the camera? But yeah, let me know down in the comments if you have ever read any of these. If you have not, let me know if you are interested in them now. Uh, also, what are you currently reading? Let me know. Give me some recommendations. Um, and yeah, that's all I really have for you. Um, like I said, all these five books, five stars, top of the charts, number one hits cannot be denied. Um, let me know what you think of them. And that's all I really have for you. I will see you in the next one. Thank you for watching.